The Battle of Bosworth was the last significant battle of the Wars of the Roses. The civil war between the houses of Lancaster and York that raged across England in the latter half of the 15th century. Fought on the 22nd of August 1485, the battle was won by the Lancastrians. Their leader Henry Tudor, Earl of Richmond, by his victory became the first English monarch of the Tudor dynasty. His opponent, Richard III, the last king of the House of York, was killed in the battle. Historians consider Bosworth Field to mark the end of the Plantagenet dynasty, making it a defining moment of English and Welsh history. Richard's reign began in 1483 when he was handed the throne after his 12-year-old nephew Edward V, for whom he was acting as Lord Protector, was declared illegitimate and ineligible for the throne. Richard lost popularity after the boy and his younger brother disappeared after Richard incarcerated them in the Tower of London, and Richard's support was further eroded by the popular belief he was implicated in the death of his wife. Across the English Channel in Brittany, Henry Tudor, a descendant of the greatly diminished House of Lancaster, seized on Richard's difficulties so that he could challenge Richard's claim to the throne. Henry's first attempt to invade England was frustrated by a storm in 1483, but at his second attempt he arrived unopposed on 7 August 1485 on the southwest coast of Wales. Marching inland, Henry gathered support as he made for London. Richard mustered his troops and intercepted Henry's army south of Market Bosworth in Leicestershire. Thomas, Lord Stanley, and Sir William Stanley brought a force to the battlefield, but held back while they decided which side it would be more advantageous to support. Richard divided his army, which outnumbered Henry's, into three groups. One was assigned to the Duke of Norfolk and another to the Earl of Northumberland. Henry kept most of his force together and placed it under the command of the experienced Earl of Oxford. Richard's vanguard, commanded by Norfolk, attacked but struggled against Oxford's men, and some of Norfolk's troops fled the field. Northumberland took no action when signalled to assist his king. So Richard gambled everything on of charge across the battlefield to kill Henry and end the fight. Seeing the king's knights separated from his army, the Stanleys intervened. Sir William led his men to Henry's aid, surrounding and killing Richard. After the battle, Henry was crowned king below an oak tree in nearby Stoke Golding, now a residential garden. Henry hired chroniclers to portray his reign favorably. The Battle of Bosworth was popularized to represent the Tudor dynasty as the start of a new age. From the 15th to 18th centuries the battle was glamorized as a victory of good over evil. The climax of William Shakespeare's play Richard III provides a focal point for critics in later film adaptations. The exact site of the battle is disputed because of the lack of conclusive data, and memorials have been erected at different locations. In 1974, the Bosworth Battlefield Heritage Center was built on a site that has since been challenged by several scholars and historians. In October 2009, a team of researchers, who had performed geological surveys and archaeological digs in the area from 2003, suggested a location two miles southwest of Ambien Hill. Background During the 15th century, civil war raged across England as the houses of York and Lancaster fought each other for the English throne. In 1471, the Yorkists defeated their rivals in the battles of Barnet and Tewkesbury. The Lancastrian king Henry VI and his only son, Edward of Lancaster, died in the aftermath of the Battle of Tewkesbury. The death left the House of Lancaster with no direct claimants to the throne. The Yorkist king, Edward IV, was in complete control of England. He attainted those who refused to submit to his rule, such as Jasper Tudor and his nephew Henry, naming them traitors and confiscating their lands. The Tudors tried to flee to France but strong winds forced him to land in Brittany, then a semi-independent duchy where they were taken into the custody of Duke Francis II. 
Henry's mother, Lady Margaret Beaufort, was a great-granddaughter of John of Gaunt, uncle of King Richard II and father of King Henry IV. The Beauforts were originally bastards, but Henry IV legitimized them on the condition that their descendants were not eligible to inherit the throne. Henry Tudor, the only remaining Lancastrian noble with the trace of the royal bloodline, had a weak claim to the throne, and Edward regarded him as a nobody. The Duke of Brittany, however, viewed Henry as a valuable tool to bargain for England's aid in conflicts with France and kept the Tudors under his protection. Edward IV died twelve years after Tewkesbury on 9 April 1483. His 12-year-old elder son succeeded him as King Edward V. The younger son, 9-year-old Richard of Shrewsbury, was next in line to the throne. Edward V was too young to rule and a royal council was established to rule the country until the king's coming of age. The royal court was worried when they learned that the Woodvilles, relatives of Edward IV's own widow Elizabeth, were plotting to seize control of the council. Having offended many in the quest for wealth and power, the Woodville family was not popular. To frustrate the Woodville's ambitions, Lord Hastings and other members of the council turned to the new king's uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, brother of Edward IV. The courtiers urged Gloucester to assume the role of protector quickly, as had been previously requested by his now-dead brother. On 29 April, Gloucester, accompanied by a contingent of guards and Henry Stafford, 2nd Duke of Buckingham, took Edward V into custody and arrested several prominent members of the Woodville family. After bringing the young king to London, Gloucester had two of the Woodvilles executed, without trial, on charges of treason. On 13 June, Gloucester accused Hastings of plotting with the Woodvilles and had him beheaded. Nine days later, Gloucester convinced Parliament to declare the marriage between Edward IV and Elizabeth illegal, rendering their children illegitimate and disqualifying them from the throne. With his brother's children out of the way, he was next in the line of succession and was proclaimed King Richard III on 26 June. The timing and extrajudicial nature of the deeds done to obtain the throne for Richard won him no popularity, and rumours that spoke ill of the new king spread throughout England. After they were declared bastards, the two princes were confined in the Tower of London and never seen in public again. Discontent with Richard's actions manifested itself in the summer after he took control of the country, as a conspiracy emerged to displace him from the throne. The rebels were mostly loyalists to Edward IV, who saw Richard as a usurper. Their plans were coordinated by a Lancastrian, Henry's mother Lady Margaret, who was promoting her son as a candidate for the throne. The highest-ranking conspirator was Buckingham. No chronicles tell of the Duke's motive in joining the plot. Although historian Charles Ross proposes that Buckingham was trying to distance himself from a king who was becoming increasingly unpopular with the people, Michael Jones and Malcolm Underwood suggest that Margaret deceived Buckingham into thinking the rebels supported him to be king. The plan was to stage uprisings within a short time in southern and western England, overwhelming Richard's forces. Buckingham would support the rebels by invading from Wales, while Henry came in by sea. Bad timing and weather wrecked the plot. An uprising in Kent started ten days prematurely, alerting Richard to muster the royal army and take steps to put down the insurrections. Richard's spies informed him of Buckingham's activities, and the king's men captured and destroyed the bridges from across the River Severn. When Buckingham and his army reached the river, they found it swollen and impossible to cross because of a violent storm that broke on 15 October. Buckingham was trapped and had no safe place to retreat. His Welsh enemies seized his home castle after he had set forth with his army. The Duke abandoned his plans and fled to Wemp, where he was betrayed by his servant and arrested by Richard's men. On 2 November 1483, he was executed. Henry had attempted a landing on 10 October, but his fleet was scattered by a storm. 
He reached the coast of England, and a group of soldiers hailed him to come ashore. They were, in truth, Richard's men, prepared to capture Henry once he set foot on English soil. Henry was not deceived and returned to Brittany, abandoning the invasion. Without Buckingham or Henry, the rebellion was easily crushed by Richard. The survivors of the failed uprisings fled to Brittany, where they openly supported Henry's claim to the throne. At Christmas, Henry Tudor swore an oath to marry Edward IV's daughter, Elizabeth of York, to unite the warring houses of York and Lancaster. Henry's rising prominence made him a great threat to Richard, and the Yorkist king made several overtures to the Duke of Brittany to surrender the young Lancastrian. Francis refused, holding out for the possibility of better terms from Richard. In mid-1484, Francis was incapacitated by illness and while recuperating, his treasurer, Pierre Landais, took over the reins of government. Landais reached an agreement with Richard to send back Henry and his uncle in exchange for military and financial aid. John Morton, a bishop of Flanders, learned of the scheme and warned the Tudors, who fled to France. The French court allowed them to stay. The Tudors were useful pawns to ensure that Richard's England did not interfere with French plans to annex Brittany. On 16 March 1485, Richard's queen, Anne Neville, died and rumours spread across the country that she was murdered to pave the way for Richard to marry his niece, Elizabeth. The gossip alienated Richard from some of his northern supporters, and upset Henry across the English Channel. The loss of Elizabeth's hand in marriage could unravel the alliance between Henry's supporters who were Lancastrians and those who were loyalists to Edward IV. Anxious to secure his bride, Henry assembled approximately 2,000 men and set sail from France on 1 August. Factions By the 15th century, English chivalric ideas of selfless service to the king had been corrupted. Armed forces were mostly raised through musters in individual estates. Every able-bodied man had to respond to his lord's call to arms and each noble had exclusive authority over his militia. Although a king could raise personal militia from his lands, he could only muster a significantly large army through the support of his nobles. Richard, like his predecessors, had to win over these men by granting gifts and maintaining cordial relationships. Powerful nobles could demand greater incentives to remain on the leader's side or else they might turn against him. Three groups, each with its own agenda, stood on Bosworth Field. Richard III and his Yorkist army, his challenger, Henry Tudor, who championed the Lancastrian cause, and the fence-sitting Stanleys. Yorkist small and slender, Richard III did not have the robust physique associated with many of his Plantagenet predecessors. However, he enjoyed very rough sports and activities that were considered manly. His performances on the battlefield impressed his brother greatly, and he became Edward's right-hand man. During the 1480s, Richard defended the northern borders of England. In 1482, Edward charged him to lead an army into Scotland with the aim of replacing King James III with the Duke of Albany. Richard's army broke through the Scottish defences and occupied the capital, Edinburgh. But Albany decided to give up his claim to the throne in return for the post of Lieutenant General of Scotland, as well as obtaining a guarantee that the Scottish government would concede territories and diplomatic benefits to the English crown. Richard's campaign retook the town of Berwick-upon-Tweed, which the Scots had conquered in 1460. Edward was not satisfied by these gains, which, according to Ross, could have been greater if Richard had been resolute enough to capitalise on the situation while in control of Edinburgh. In her analysis of Richard's character, Christine Carpenter sees him as a soldier who was more used to taking orders than giving them. However, he was not averse to displaying his militaristic streak. On ascending the throne he made known his desire to lead a crusade against not only the Turks, but all his foes. Richard's most loyal subject was John Howard, 1st Duke of Norfolk. The Duke served Richard's brother for many years and had been one of Edward IV's a closer confidants. 
He was a military veteran, having fought in the Battle of Toturn in 1461 and served as Hastings deputy at Calais in 1471. Ross speculates that he may have borne a grudge against Edward for depriving him of a fortune. Norfolk was due to inherit a share of the wealthy Mowbray estate on the death of eight-year-old Anne de Mowbray, the last of her family. However, Edward convinced Parliament to circumvent the law of inheritance and transfer the estate to his younger son, who was married to Anne. Consequently, Howard supported Richard III in deposing Edward's sons, for which he received the Dukedom of Norfolk and his original share of the Mowbray estate. Henry Percy, 4th Earl of Northumberland, also supported Richard's seizure of the throne of England. The Percys were loyal Lancastrians, but Edward IV eventually won the Earl's allegiance. Northumberland had been captured and imprisoned by the Yorkists in 1461, losing his titles and estates. However, Edward released him eight years later and restored his earldom. From that time Northumberland served the Yorkist crown, helping to defend northern England and maintain its peace. Initially the Earl had issues with Richard III as Edward groomed his brother to be the leading power of the North. Northumberland was mollified when he was promised he would be the Warden of the East March, a position that was formerly hereditary for the Percys. He served under Richard during the 1482 invasion of Scotland, and the allure of being in a position to dominate the north of England if Richard went south to assume the crown was his likely motivation for supporting Richard's bid for kingship. However, after becoming king, Richard began moulding his nephew, John de la Pole, 1st Earl of Lincoln, to manage the North, passing over Northumberland for the position. According to Carpenter, although the Earl was amply compensated he despaired of any possibility of advancement under Richard. Lancastrian Henry Tudor was unfamiliar with the arts of war and a stranger to the land he was trying to conquer. He spent the first 14 years of his life in Wales and the next 14 in Brittany and France. Slender but strong and decisive, Henry lacked a penchant for battle and was not much of a warrior. Chroniclers such as Polydor Virgil and ambassadors like Pedro de Ayala found him more interested in commerce and finance, having not fought in any battles. Henry recruited several experienced veterans on whom he could rely for military advice and the command of his armies. John de Vere, 13th Earl of Oxford, was Henry's principal military commander. He was adept in the arts of war. At the Battle of Barnet, he commanded the Lancastrian right wing and routed the division opposing him. However, as a result of confusion over identities, Oxford's group came under friendly fire from the Lancastrian main force and retreated from the field. The Earl fled abroad and continued his fight against the Yorkists, raiding shipping and eventually capturing the island fort of St. Michael's Mount in 1473. He surrendered after receiving no aid or reinforcement, but in 1484 escaped from prison and joined Henry's court in France bringing along his erstwhile jailer Sir James Blunt. Oxford's presence raised morale in Henry's camp and troubled Richard III. Stanleys in the early stages of the Wars of the Roses The Stanleys of Cheshire were predominantly Lancastrians. Sir William Stanley, however, was a staunch Yorkist supporter, fighting in the Battle of Blore Heath in 1459 and helping Hastings to put down uprisings against Edward IV in 1471. When Richard took the crown, Sir William showed no inclination to turn against the new king, refraining from joining Buckingham's rebellion, for which he was amply rewarded. Sir William's elder brother, Thomas Stanley, 2nd Baron Stanley, was not as steadfast. By 1485, he had served three kings, namely Henry VI, Edward IV, and Richard III. Lord Stanley's skilled political manoeuvrings, vacillating between opposing sides until it was clear who would be the winner, gained him high positions. He was Henry's Chamberlain and Edward's steward. His non-committal stance, until the crucial point of a battle, earned him the loyalty of his men who felt he would not needlessly send them to their deaths. 
Even though Lord Stanley had served as Edward IV as a steward, his relations with the king's brother, the eventual Richard III, were not cordial. The two had conflicts with each other that erupted into violence around March 1470. Furthermore, having taken Lady Margaret as his second wife in June 1472, Stanley was Henry Tudor's stepfather, a relationship which did nothing to win him Richard's favour. Despite these differences, Stanley did not join Buckingham's revolt in 1483, when Richard executed those conspirators who were unable to flee England, he spared Lady Margaret. However, he declared her titles forfeit, and transferred her estates to Stanley's name, to be held in trust for the Yorkist crown. Richard's act of mercy was calculated to reconcile him with Stanley, but it may have been to no avail. Carpenter has identified a further cause of friction in Richard's intention to reopen an old land dispute that involved Thomas Stanley and the Harrington family. Edward IV had ruled the case in favour of Stanley in 1473, but Richard planned to overturn his brother's ruling and give the wealthy estate to the Harringtons. Immediately before the Battle of Bosworth, being wary of Stanley, Richard took his son, Lord Strange, as hostage to discourage him from joining Henry. 